Good morning, everyone. Today I am out on a farm to preach because today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And I thought, well, if we couldn't be together, what better way, what better place to celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday than to be out on a farm where there are lots of sheep. Now, there's a little one right there. We are actually going to see a few more sheep in just a little bit. But like I said, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And over here, we've got a dog. Um, for those of you who remember my old sermons, that dog's name could be goodness or it could be mercy, right? Oh, there's, there's another sheep right here. And right in front of that sheep is a gate. Now that gate is kind of important for today. I just want to show you how easy it is to open that gate. Right there. And you go through the gate and you close it. The rule is always leave a gate the way you find it, right? That's pretty important. So um, close the gate behind me. The gate is important because Jesus in our sermon today, in our reading today, he makes that gate important. He says that anyone who climbs in to the sheepfold in another way besides the gate is a thief and a robber. But the good shepherd, well, the good shepherd goes through the gate. Now, Jesus talks about himself as the gate. The gate is the way into the sheepfold. And the sheepfold is the church. It is the place where all the goodness and mercy of, of, of Jesus is found. All the good things of, of food, life, salvation. And look how this, look how this, this sheepfold is built. See that wood over here? This sheepfold is built with wood and nails. And that is exactly how Jesus built the sheepfold of the church. With the wood of the cross and with the nails in his hands and his feet. And that is why there's only one way into his sheepfold, the church, and that is the gate. And once again, look how easy it is. You go. It's easy because Jesus has done the hard work of building it with wood and nails. And so it's easy to get in only by Jesus and his dying and his rising on our behalf. Now he says another way is by climbing over the fence. And I'm not going to climb over the fence for you today, but a thief and a robber climbs over the fence. Now, that's another way into the church. And Another way that a thief and a robber would come to steal a sheep is, would be by preaching and teaching any other way than Jesus and him crucified and risen. If someone teaches and preaches that there's another way into the sheepfold, another way of salvation besides Jesus and his dying and rising, that's another way. They're a thief and a robber. If someone says all paths are the same path, all lead to God. That's another way. It's a thief and a robber. Only, only one has come into the flesh and has laid down his life for you and taken it up again. It's the good shepherd, Jesus. If somebody says, Jesus and a whole bunch of works, that is another way. Now, good works are, are definitely necessary, but they're not necessary for salvation, not necessary to get into the church, a place where all Jesus is handing out his gifts. It's not necessary. We'll, we'll do good works out of love for God, for our neighbor, but not necessary for salvation. And so if anyone teaches another way besides Jesus and him crucified and risen, that is another way. And so Jesus says the good shepherd goes through the gate, the door. And then he says that shepherd calls them by name and leads them out because they know his voice. 
In doing a little research, I watched a video, and in the first, there was a man who had lived in, in, the, in the Middle East for quite some time, and he did some research, and he said that there was always a sheep pen at the end of the village, and a shepherd would come out, and he'd have a flute, blow a few special notes, he'd have his own unique sounds that he would blow, and he would make the sounds out of the flute, and the sheep would follow, them out, follow him out to pasture. Well, I don't have a flute today, and, and our reading doesn't talk about a flute. It talks about Jesus having a unique voice. And the unique voice of Jesus is the unique voice of the gospel. It is the voice that says that I have done it all for you. I have laid my life down for you. I've taken my life up for you. You are freely forgiven for my sake. Even though you die, yet you will live. I've gone to my father's house to prepare a place for you. If I've gone there to prepare a place for you, I'll come back so that you may be where I am. And interesting enough, here comes a sheep. Check me out. There's a, oh, there's a real small one right there. And so a shepherd has a unique voice. And what's, what we need to hear is that we, his sheep, recognize that voice. I'm here preaching on the farm, and I have a brother-in-law who's preaching in Iowa in church. I have a nephew who just received a call to go and preach in L.A., right by Hollywood, I'm told, about, about 10 miles away from the beach. And guess what? No matter where we are preaching, it is always the voice of the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd is, is proclaiming that he has done it all for us. And we recognize that if we're in L.A., hanging out in Hollywood, hanging out 10 miles from the beach, we recognize the voice of Christ saying, I've laid down my life for you. If we're in Iowa, we're in Florida, where my sister is, it's, I've laid down my life for you. And we recognize that unique voice. And the Good Shepherd also says, and I lead them out. Now, notice, I, I don't know, the, you know what, they all kind of scattered because I'm not, they're a good shepherd. They have their own shepherd. But look, they are, if you can see them, they are all together. There's not, there's not, a, there's not a sheep, there's not a single sheep in this sheep pen. They're all hanging out together because they are a flock. I lead them out, Jesus says. See, once again, I'm going to tell you again that it's normal for sheep to be gathered together into a flock. And our Lord Jesus, he has made us together a flock at Messiah Lutheran Church in Redfield, at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Doland. We're a flock put together by Jesus himself. And every one of us is an important part of that flock. And I'm looking forward to gathering together. If anyone who else is, is listening who isn't a member of a flock anywhere, oh, you're always welcome to join us. Always. Give me, give me a text. You see my email at the, end of this, at the end of this sermon. But not only are we a member of a flock, but we are also called by name. If, you would, if, we were, if they weren't all scattered on me, you would be able to see that they all have name tags. But you know what? I guarantee you, most farmers who have this many sheep, they know, they know the sheep apart from their, their name tags or their number tags on their ears. They, they all have a name. We all have a name. When we were baptized, part of the liturgy is, is to put, say our name, John Smith. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. We're almost kind of like branded sheep. We have, we have our name, then we have a little brand that shows everyone that we belong to Christ the crucified. And then just as we are baptized, we say our name, and then water is poured over us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are not just a sheep that looks like every other sheep. You are a sheep that has a name. Well, in our reading, it then goes on and says that they didn't know what Jesus was talking about. Whoever Jesus was talking about, 
talking to. They didn't know what he was talking about. So Jesus says to them again, I am the door. I'm the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. And talks about thieves and robbers again. And then he says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Well, this, this takes us out from away from the farm. Now Jesus has moved away from the end of the village, moves us away from the farm, and he moves us out to the pasture. And out in the pasture, some shepherd has once again, once again done the hard work of building a sheepfold, kind of out of rocks in, a, in almost a complete circle, except for one little gap where the, where the, where the gate goes. And there's no gate because the shepherd himself is the gate. He lays down. Jesus quite literally is the gate because he's laid down his life for us. And he says, they go in and they go out. You know, they go into, the, they go into that, that sheepfold and they find protection. A lot of coyotes out there, a lot, of, a lot of wolves, a lot of things that can go wrong. And so they go in, find protection, protected by the shepherd. We go into the sheepfold. We're protected by Jesus himself from all the evil that wants to take hold of us. Destroy our souls. Destroy us. Or we go out. And as we go out, what do we find? Jesus says we find pasture. The green pastures of his word. He makes us lie down. Psalm 23, right? Lie down in green pastures. And what does he do while we're out in those green pastures? He restores my soul. Leads us beside the, the, the still waters. Comforted by his rod and his staff. And we, we fear no evil. Because he is with us. Even if we go through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil. Because he is with us. And all this. Jesus says. Because I'm the good shepherd. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly have it to the full so that we have a full life of forgiveness a full life of salvation a full life of our good shepherd himself a full life with being together with our fellow sheep that christ has placed us with but we have christ has come that we might have full uh, life and have it to the full well, here we go. I want, to, I want to show you the sheep one more time. And maybe you can see how, how small some of them are. But today, Jesus is our good shepherd. And he's come that we might have life and have it to the full. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent Jesus to be our good shepherd. And we thank you that he has laid down his life for us. We thank you that he's taken it up again for us. We thank you that he is our door and that we go in and find salvation easily with him, through him. We pray that you would be with all those who are in need of your care. We pray that you'd be with our sister in Christ, who hopefully is coming out home from the hospital today. Be with her, grant her a speedy recovery according to your will. Be with our sister in Christ who fell this last week. We also pray that, that she continues to recover in a rapid fashion according to your will. We pray that you'd be with the family of Francis McNeely, who passed away. Be with them. Comfort them as, as Francis has passed away. Let them know that Francis has gone through that valley of the shadow of, of death and that now he dwells in your house forevermore. That they will be with him forevermore because of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. We pray that you'd be with all the farmers who are planting. We pray that that planting would continue to go, go well. As business is open once again, we pray that they would flourish according to your will. We be, pray that you'd be with all those who are in college and, and this week have finals here in the state of South Dakota. Grant them knowledge, bring to, bring to recall everything that they have studied. Be with those who are teaching and who are learning in grade school and high school here in South Dakota, across the country as they learn in a new way. Help them to be able to finish out a solid school year. 
And dear Heavenly Father, for everything else we pray, we bring in the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, let's go over and take a look at this gate once more. I always leave a gate the way you find it. That easy. Because Jesus laid down his life. Made it easy for you. He is the gate. He is the way. He is a good shepherd.